Uh, kia ora. I've got a question for whoever can answer it too. I'm just curious about some of the iconography on the flag and um, thanks for explaining the stars. I had thought for a while there that it was a New Zealand flag in reverse somehow. Um, the two things I'm left with are the icon between the star formation and the Union Jack and I'm curious about the NZ on the cuff of the Māori hand side of the handshake. Can anyone uh, enlighten me or indulge me, shall I say? Yeah, they, that's the, uh, the Pākehā hand. We, we say it's the hand of the Crown, actually, represented through uh, His Majesty, uh, who we really hope was going to become the King. Uh, and, uh, and he let us down. Um, and the, and the, the brown hand is, is the Māori people. And uh, as I say, the, the flag was done out really after that 1920 historic uh, meeting when our, finally our, our, our people from the Kingitanga and, and us, that's Ngāti Kaufata and Wehiwe, got our, got our time into, because we'd had no luck with the commissions and all that. And so we really, we really thought that the the king to be what might be able to get in a position that's been the, on the crown side to help us to get some justice for our, for our claims and uh, so that's what the hand uh, symbolises uh, and the NZ and the he's got N where, where's that? on the cuff of the oh, the, oh yeah I oh. take PE to be Prince Edward yeah he's the pre well <laughs> NZ is probably a Aotearoa you know that yeah okay <laughs> Uh, I can't be uh, 100% sure on, on the, uh, but a good question. I never actually thought to, to ask it. And as I say, uh, we did ask the uh, uh, the Prince of Wales if he could give us the coat of arms to the royal family, because uh, that would definitely would have helped us. But he wasn't going to have a bar, I don't think. The icon in the centre of the top. That's the matari here. That's the kingitanga. Ah, uh, okay. I have yeah, confused yeah. the. St- yeah, yeah. That's it's. Um, uh, yeah, it's probably lost a lot of its uh, thing. We, we, we still use the flag for tangi, at, uh, at, uh, we, we, and we're very proud to, to fly it out, and we bring it out when the, the kingi tangas are anywhere around anywhere. We've got that got to come out, uh, you know, and, and we're very proud of our, our, our links. Okay, so the star formation and the, uh, the icon in the middle gate should be read together? Yes. Okay, I'm with you. Thank you. Thank you. Kia ora teiwa, teiwa. Oh. Um, Can I just be clear, in Mr McBurney's book he refers to it as a reproduction. Yes. So is this a reproduction of, of, of the flag? Yeah, of yeah, the flag, yeah, the original one, yeah. And it's based on photos, I assume, of the original? Of the original one, yes. What happened to the original? Um, decay. Just uh, decayed over yeah, time? Yep, uh, over time. Uh, and the other thing too is um, this is based on factual uh, record, uh, uh, Peter pulled us up. We'd always been talking about 1924 or something, and uh, just as he was about to publish, he rang me up and rather annoyed and said, "Hey, you check your facts this time. It was 1920 because he went back to the to the records of the time." So what what Peter's written is 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 uh, yeah. factual. And it's a flag that has been kept at your Monaco Marae. Yes, we just keep it in, in a little box to to, to store it, and, uh, and it comes out when we have tangi, or if we have occasions where the where the kingi tangas coming to town. <laughs> All right. Now, just just coming back to yeah. to Te Poi. Te Poi is a bit out of our district, but yes, yes. just just to um, tidy away the connection up here, the the, the the hapu you referred to was Ngati Kirihika. Yes, uh, we, we we believe I believe we had a Whakapapa hui there. You know, when when people leave an area like our, we, you hold on to the Whakapapa you hold on to the story. They be they're precious, but when you're living in that area, it's easy to lose them. And I think this is what's happened for a lot of our kaufata we, we history up here, actually. Because we haven't been here, um, and other people are here, and, and our other relations have, have um, t- taken more prominence, which is understandable. It's been left to people that have gone away, like us, to hold on to those stories. And the good thing about our, it is that our old people have, have, from kaufata and we, we have always talked to us about these stories. And they're precious because they come from a far away. And if you depart, cast your mind back to the 18th century there where the transport was, was by horse and cart, you can understand how precious they are. So our people from, from Ukaipo, they came down, really, they were came down looking for the whakapapa. That's what they came down to, to see. To, so to, to be us. clear, yeah. um, the, the, the whare there is wehi wehi. Is Ngāti Kirihika 
does it regard itself as a Ngāti Raukawa hapu? It, it, it does, actually. It certainly does. Yes, and, right. and even in the Ngāti Raukawa traditions there, they call Wehiwe a hapu of, of Raukawa uh, in, in that, that area. Because there are, there are also other people um, that live up there that also claim the Wehiwe yes. um, side, but they haven't been prominent or they haven't really known much about the whakapapa and so on. Yes. When, when I go back to the, and this is documents A78E, which is the 1881 Commission, yes. uh, and uh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, Council don't need to address this right now, but um, at the beginning it has a schedule of all of the petitioners. Yes. And, uh, sorry, my machine is just playing up. Um, and and there's, there's a schedule of names starting with Tapate Fata and goes through all these names. Yes. And then at the end it says, All Ngāti Wehi Wehi Per Manahi Paura. Yes. And uh, I was just a little bit confused as to what that meant in terms of the original petition, whether it was a Ngāti Kauwhata petition, a Ngāti Wehiwehi petition, or a joint petition. Yeah, do yeah, you have any understanding? Oh, I do. That, that schedule contains uh, Kauwhata and the Wehiwe. Manahi Pāra te, te Hiakai was, was an acknowledged um, paramount chief, if you like, for Ngāti Wehiwe. But also we know in our traditions that he, he had a lot to do with our Ngāti Kauwhata relations uh, up, in, up in the fielding way. So, there, and Another another point of um, connection between the two was the Catholic faith at Pukekaraka in Otaki. Uh, you'll see on the wall there in the, in the church, and uh, my kids are we brought up with Catholic. Um, there's a lot of that history between uh, Manahi Te Hiakai and uh, uh, Te Ara from Kaufata and all our relations there, and that, that was the point. But uh, Manahi, uh, if, I, if I could say, he was acknowledged as having particularly having uh, mana uh, in presence. To Fatanui saying, <laughs> to to stay down there and don't come back up. Yes. To Fatanui was was with with the Heke. He was of that time. Yes, yeah, right? yeah, he was a major uh, major chief, and, and for many of us, he's also our ancestor on our Ngāti Raukawa side. Mm. He was a major chief that uh, led the um, Hekinga self um, on the way down. As uh, Peter said in his book, he stopped off at Napier, uh, and. Um, uh, they had a fight with, with the with the yeah. with the people over there, and um, what happened was our, our people down further south thought he'd been uh, they'd been killed, but funny enough, he thought that we'd been killed in an, another battle that was uh, happening at, at the same time. Kapai, Mrs. Jacobs, can I just Thank clarify you. a couple of points briefly? Um, at paragraph ten, you refer to uh, four acres being given to Ngati Mortai. Who are Ngāti Mōtai? Are they Araukawa Hapu or do you not know? My husband will know. He'd be able to explain it better than me. Yes. Kia ora anō. Ngāti Mōtai was a, a more traditional Hapu. They were around prior to both Kauwhata and, and Raukawa, their ancestors. And they resided on parts of Mangatautari. All right, thank you. And just back to you, Mrs. Jacobs, where you talk about the family moving to, to Poi to work on a farm. Mm-hmm. Whose farm? Was that Māori land or was it a Pākehā farmer? No, it was Māori land. It was, it was land that, um, uh, through Manahi, Te Hiakai. I see. And because my mother was, um, was, was a whāngai of his. Yes. So, so um, legally, she was a legal whāngai, not just a whāngai, but... Um, so that um, yeah, that was land, as we understand it, was that was handed down from him, and also my grandfather. I mean, there was some arrangement, obviously between Manahi and and um, Toru Gardner, who was our grandfather, and um, we're not quite clear about the arrangements of the farm and in terms of um, um, how how the whole the profit stuff was was configured, but no, I'm not yeah. so much interested in that. It's just just how he came to be there. It, it won't have been through his Ngati Wehi Wehi 
um, identity? Will it have been through another identity? Is that right? Um, it says we well, here identity, as I understand it. Well, I got the sense that that um, Ngati Kofata and Ngati Wehi Wehi weren't awarded lands at Te Poi. Your husband's going to help you. Um, yeah, quite right. Um, as uh, Kofata, Rokawa, or Wehi Wehi, they weren't awarded lands. However, they also bore other Whakapapa affiliations just as strong. Uh, Yes, and, and, th- this and then is they were awarded lands that way. Money he descended from one um, Uta Paura, mm. who was one of the original grantees. And this is this is the similar situation with the Whare Puhunga blocks, where although Ngati Kofata and Ngati Wehi Wehi were not formally awarded interests, you still find yeah, uh, well, your you people just, in there. Just change your whakapapa head. Yes. <laughs> That's how they done it.